Whenever we need to understand the impact of a variable or feature on our response variable or how statistically important our feature is with respect to the response variable, we use various statistical tests. I am Saurav Agarwal, you are watching Data Hack Unfolding Mystery and in this video, we are going to learn about statistical tests and one of the important comparison based statistical tests that is ANOVA. Let us understand first what is the significance of statistical tests. So the agenda for this video lies as introduction to statistical tests, we will understand some of the prerequisites, types of statistical tests, ANOVA and finally we shall look at the code implementation for the ANOVA. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, share with your friends and data science enthusiasts and let us continue. So first of all, like when do we use, use statistical tests? Like as we mentioned, when we need to understand the statistical significance of the difference observed between various groups with respect to the impact on the response variable. For example, in predicting the price of a house, does the variable area of house hold a statistical significance? As you can see from the image here, does the color hold a statistical significance in determining the price of this clothing? Well, when you need to answer such type of questions, we use various statistical tests. Usually, in order to, why we need this statistical test? Because usually we collect a sample from the entire population. The entire population could be very large and collecting the entire population could be computationally very expensive as well as the cost associated would be very high. Therefore, we use the statistical tests on the sample collected in order to understand the significance. Now, we work, how do we work for the statistical test? We work by computing a test statistic. Often this is the mean difference or the mean between the various groups and that describes how much the relationship between variables under test differ from the null hypothesis. We shall in a short while understand what we mean by null hypothesis. Okay. Next, based on that test statistic, we compute a p-value. P-value is a probability which says that given the null hypothesis is true, what is the likelihood of seeing the observed value? So, in case our p-value is less than the significance, it means that the likelihood of observing the given value under the circumstances that the null hypothesis is true is very unlikely. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis in those circumstances. We shall also understand it based on an example. Okay, now the prerequisites. So, there are primarily four prerequisites that we need to understand with respect to statistical tests. First is the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis denotes that there is no statistical difference between the groups. The alternate hypothesis suggests that there exists certain relationship or there exists certain statistically important difference in uh, difference between the various groups. Type 1 error. Type 1 error denotes the false positives or falsely rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay. Whereas type 2 error denotes the false negatives, falsely rejecting the, falsely accepting the null hypothesis. Okay. So, you just keep, keep a note of these four terminologies and these four notations. We are going to use these quite often and whenever you learn about various statistical tests, apply them, you are going to hear about these terminologies quite often. Next, we come to the types of statistical tests. So, primarily statistical tests are grouped under two broad umbrellas, parametric and non-parametric. Understand that statistical tests, whenever we carry out any statistical test, we determine a set of assumptions. The assumptions are based on our feature variables, the response variables. Now the, now, the three primary assumptions that we undertake is independence of the data points or the independence of observations. So, each data point that we consider for our statistical test must be independent of any other point among the various groups. Okay. The second is the normality. So, each group, the response variable or the distribution of our response variable under each group should be normally distributed. And the third holds as 
द वेरियंस शुड बी सिमिलर अक्रॉस ग्रुप्स द वेरियंस वट वी मीन बाई दैट इज द द रेंज और द हाउ फार अ पार्ट आर द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज हाउ मच वेरिंग अक्रॉस द डिफरेंट ग्रुप्स फॉर द रेस्पॉन्स वेरिएबल सो दीज आर द थ्री प्राइमरी एजम्पन्स बेस्ड ऑन विच वी कंडक्ट आर स्टैटिस्टिकल टेस्क नाउ इफ दीज एजम्पन्स होल्ड ट्रू then we conduct parametric tests and they give us results of paramount importance however if any of these assumptions does not hold true then we need to conduct a non parametric test and in performance non parametric tests are less precise as compared to parametric tests okay now coming to the parametric test some of the examples include basically the parametric tests are further grouped into regression correlation and comparison so regression tests look for cause and effect relationship if something is happening so based on this what should be the outcome right so based on the development of an area the price of house in that area could could would be impacted and that is a cause and effect relationship there it is used to estimate the effect of one or more continuous variables on dependent variable okay comparison test on the other hand look for differences in groups it is used to test the effect of a categorical variable on the mean of some other characteristic and the examples of comparison based tests are like t test anova test okay correlation tests on the other hand test whether variables are related without hypothesizing a cause and effect relationship for example the people of a certain country are Uh, grow richer based on their consumption of the chocolate eating habits however there is no cause and effect relationship between people eating chocolates and the richness or the wealth of the country that is growing right there there might be lot of other factors playing into the role and therefore we determine a correlation there instead of a cause and effect relationship that is in regression now coming to the non parametric tests some of the examples include chi square test and also same wilcoxon okay now uh, under what circumstances we conduct as we mentioned like if any of the conditions that we or assumptions that we define for our parametric test does not hold to we conduct a non parametric test so hope you understand so far why we need statistical test why we are conducting it the types of statistical tests and when should we conduct a parametric versus a non parametric test now coming to our Uh, before moving ahead there's a small thought for everyone every day do something that will inch you closer to a better tomorrow now your better tomorrow could be defined by where, where you want to be what is the goal how do you define to be so i suggest go ahead and spend at least 30 minutes each day into learning new ideas new thoughts and new topics right just go ahead and explore them try to grasp the concepts and each day spending 30 minutes is not a very challenging task but it will definitely give you a lot of advantage and you'll see a lot of growth in your learning right at the end of one year so go ahead and make a routine for that next we come to anova right we talked of like anova is a comparison based parametric test now when we conduct comparison when our features are categorical and our response variable is continuous so based on the categorical features what or based on the various groups what is the impact on our response variable we usually conduct a difference in means between the various groups of the response variable okay now and now when do we use anova versus when do we use t test t tests are applied when we have two groups okay however whenever we have more than two groups under any given circumstance then we conduct anova okay so for two groups we use t test and for more than two groups we use anova hope this distinction is clear now anova is primarily of two types one way anova and two way anova it's i should not say it is two types rather it 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 is it could be done based on like you could also have three way anova four way anova this depends based on the number of attributes that you are considering okay and primarily we use two types of anova techniques that is the one way anova and two way anova in our practical applications so what is one way anova whenever we have one feature variable 
impact whenever we want to determine the relationship of one feature variable to our response variable then we conduct one way ANOVA however if we want to if you want to understand or determine how two factors impact a response variable then we conduct two-way ANOVA let us see an example for one-way ANOVA to know how three different learning methods lead to different mean exam scores so understand now here the number of groups remains more than two here we have three groups and but the number of features that we are considering is one so how the learning method three different learning methods impact our mean exam scores so this this can be done using one way ANOVA two way ANOVA we want to determine how gender and different levels of exercise impact weight loss now different levels of exercise and gender together would have more than two groups and at the same time here we have more than two more than one feature two we have two features so we will apply two way ANOVA here also you are understanding in what circumstances we are applying ANOVA see we have a categorical variable and we are understanding what is the impact of different groups on our response variable in the first case the response variable was the exam scores and in the second case the ex response variable was the weight loss okay now we will see a practical problem a use case okay a large scale farm is interested in understanding which of three different fertilizers lead to highest crop yield so understand this you have a very large scale farm and it is interested to understand three how three different fertilizers are impacting crop yield so what you can do the practical approach would be the farmer would go ahead and apply to different fields different lands say he, he has 30 different fields okay so each so he'll apply each of the fertilizer to 10 groups each or 10 different farms each and compute its yield at the end of the season now he will compare using one way ANOVA what is the impact of the different fertilizers on its final yield okay so this way he'll be able to compute without waiting too long to understand like for example if you wait mul multiple years sorry if you wait multiple years to understand what is the impact of your fertilizer on the crop yield it might be too late so you want to statistically determine it early hand based on just one season alone okay now with this we come to the end of our lecture wherein we understood what is a statistical test what are the types of statistical tests we also understood the ANOVA test when should we use ANOVA when should we use t-test we learned about one way ANOVA two way ANOVA and towards the end I would like to mention a point that also we will look at the implementation code after this but just for the time being understand that whatever statistical test we conduct right these are significant in a way that these are indicatory these do not have a like uh, you cannot say that 100% this is going to be true they just give an indication that this is this might be going to take place or this might be the scenario also it saves a loss of cost in terms of like if you go for actual population based measures right and they are primarily conducted on smaller samples much smaller samples as compared to the entire population so they help you there as well the significance level along with p value determines whether or not to reject the null hypothesis okay the significance level as we mentioned like if p value is less than significance level often the significance level is 0 0.05 and p is probability so it will lie between 0 and 1 so if p value is less than 0 0.05 understand it understand it very nicely okay if p value is less than 0 0.05 it would mean that the likelihood of observing uh, likelihood of seeing the observed data or observed difference given the condition that your null hypothesis is true is very less likely therefore you reject your null hypothesis hope this makes sense hope you are understanding and have a better understanding or better idea regarding the p-value the significance level that is the entire objective right if you are able to grasp the idea the core principles then you would go ahead and apply it anyhow right the applying is not the challenging part challenging part is to understand when to apply what to apply and which of these would be the right or how to evaluate right okay so with this i'll pause this video here and then we'll come back again for the implementation 
Now let us look at the implementation, the code implementation for ANOVA using SciP in Python. Okay, so we understand that there are two types of statistical tests. I'll attach all the links in the description al along with some of the references which you can go through and read more about it. Okay, so just, just understand how we implement it. We import the libraries as needed. We import pandas because we are loading a data frame. We are lo loading scipy.stats as stats. Okay, we need scipy.stats because it contains the implementation for ANOVA. And we are using matplotlib for some visualization. We read a data. I already had this data set downloaded. This is a loan prediction data set from Kaggle. I'll upload this data set as well. You can check it and try to work it your way as well. If you see the sample data set as here, now we are considering the response here as the loan amount and a categorical variable as property area. Okay. So what we are doing is we are filtering out whenever loan status is true the impact of property area on the loan amount okay now if we see the property area the value counts for the different groups we have three different groups here so we can apply one way ANOVA semi-urban urban and rural if you look at it the distribution the density plot for the three different groups they are very similar right they do not have a considerable difference and we will see the same using the test as well which will make our conclusion more uh, robust more reliable okay so what we are doing we are setting the multi index index comma property area if you don't know or if you are not familiar with multi index i've already created a video which you can check in the i link above there is a complete series on pandas go ahead and check that out next what we do we set this multi index we drop this a because we have already set it so this is somehow something this it would look like this okay next we pass it to the function stats dot f one way okay we pass each of the three groups one by one and you get an f value you get a p value now you see here the p value is 0 0.85 which is much higher than your significance level which is by default 0 0.05 now in this scenario you cannot reject your null hypothesis and you have to conclude that there is no statistical difference in the three groups in determining the loan amount hope this makes clear hope they are now familiar with the implementation part as well so if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe hit the bell icon share with your friends and data science enthusiasts see you in the next video have a nice day bye bye Jai Hind.